I'm Nathan Hone, and welcome to another devlog for Brave as Coconut, my quirky classic adventure game starring our cat, Coco. So a couple of months back, I got accepted to show my game at the Queensland Games Festival. For those of you not from around here, the Queensland Games Festival is a place for indies to showcase their games to the public. It's a pretty great opportunity for emerging games like Brave as Coconut to have people come and play your game and talk to you about what they liked. The only problem there was that at the time, there wasn't really any playable version of Bravest Coconut that I could use, so I knew I had to pause everything else and just make that. I had a few test scenes that I was using to, well, test stuff, but there wasn't really a coherent loop that someone could play from a beginning to an end. I also wanted to have a good table presence at the festival, and lucky for me, my sister Mel and my brother Ben are pretty great at making cool stuff. Mel made me some Bravest Coconut shirts to wear, and Ben wanted to make me a cool table display. I mentioned that I was thinking about having a retro theme set up to match the general vibe of Bravest Coconut, so he went away and started designing some ideas. We'll come back to Ben soon. My plan for the demo was to have a short loop that could be easily played in about 10 minutes or less. That way, people could reasonably have a full playthrough without feeling like they were taking too long. It only had to convey the basic feeling of the game, a bit of combat, a bit of dialogue, and a simple multi-stage puzzle. There wasn't a lot of time before the festival, and I also wanted to take the demo to Squiggly River, the local game developer meetup for some playtesting. Squiggly River was two weeks before the festival, which gave me a bit of time between them to fix up any bugs that might be found there. But it was only a few weekends away, so I had to keep scope down to make sure I'd be able to finish enough of it so that it made sense to people. So the basic story would be something like this. Coco is on her way to Nathan's house to play the game he's working on, but the path is blocked by thorns. An owl tells her to visit the potion master to make a potion to get rid of the thorns. Coco then needs to venture out to get two ingredients for the potion, and that's where combat comes in. Then, when she returns, the potion master is gone, so she needs to solve the puzzle of completing the potion herself. The aim was also to try and use as many existing assets as possible to minimize the time needed to draw new stuff. And so the first thing I did was draw a bunch of new stuff. I fleshed out the art gallery scene with a new shelf and some actual art by my wife Lily. A link to her channel is in the description. I then added the interior of the Potion Master's house, including this bubbling cauldron, this shelf, and this giant book. Next, I built out this cave area where Coco could battle some skeletons and find one of the potion ingredients. I also built out a small forest area where Coco could find the other ingredient. I didn't know what enemies to put in the forest yet, so I just left this empty for now. I dusted off my old lumberjack character and his log cabin and put them in the town area so that Coco could find the branch she needed to eventually make a torch. Then I went back to the potions house and added Ivy, the potion master herself. I needed some thorns to block the path, so I drew some quick vines and added spikes. I was running out of time to finish all of the stuff I wanted before the weekend, so I prioritized finishing up all the dialogue and anything core to completing the potion puzzle. It was now playable from the start, right up to the bit before Coco steps into Nathan's house. There was a bunch of detail missing, but it was playable, so I took it along to Squiggly River. Now, I forgot to record any footage that day, so let's skip ahead to later that night. I got a bunch of valuable feedback from everyone that playtested the game at Squiggly River especially Riley of Spug Games, and a shout out to Isopod, which I got to playtest and it is a lot of fun. Riley managed to find pretty much every possible bug in the demo. Some I already knew about, but a lot that I didn't. Thankfully, most of them were easy enough to fix, so I did that first. The next thing was finish replacing the crude placeholder art. I drew the exterior of the Potion Master's house and added these little pumpkins to her yard. Then I drew this palette sign to attach to the art gallery's roof. And most importantly, I added the finale scene to the demo. Coco could now enter Nathan's house and actually finish the loop. With that done, I went about fleshing out the combat areas by adding some new enemies. The first one was this bat. The sprite is a simple wing flap animation. I coded some new behavior for the bat's general flying state where it moves in a figure eight style pattern until it sees Coco and then it swoops. With that done, I moved on to another stable of RPG monsters, the slime. My slimes just bounce up and down and move around randomly. Then I added these burrowing spiker monsters. They reuse the wandering behavior from the slimes, but present it a bit differently. When they are moving, they burrow underground and put spikes up through the ground. This was a bit of a challenge to get looking right, but I feel like it was good enough for the demo, so I moved on. 
I'd been meaning to add a secret or two, and after a couple of playtesters said the same thing, I knew I had to add something. So I added a treasure chest just out of the way to reward players for exploring. This also led me to implementing a mechanic that I'd been thinking about. I gave Coco a reusable cup that she can fill at the cafe. The cafe had been a test scene for a very long time. In fact, I think the ordering a drink dialogue was probably the first dialogue I ever wrote for the game. Up until now, it didn't really do anything and I wanted to change that. So I built out a feature that Coco could get her cup refilled and then be able to drink it out in the world to refill her hearts. The game was looking pretty good. There was only a couple more nice to haves that I wanted to finish up before I could call it done. I added an extra little bit to the intro with these cockatoos flying away and wrote out a bit of extra music for when Coco was adventuring outside of the town area. Now that the demo was ready for the games festival, I checked in with Ben to see how the display was coming along. Hey, Ben here. To suit the retro theme Nathan envisioned, I initially pitched the idea of a custom display inspired by TVs like the JVC Biosphere, which I dubbed the Coco Vision. We ultimately agreed to keep it simple, with a basic USB monitor wrapped in 3D printed shroud to mimic the aesthetic of a classic black CRT TV. But the Coco Vision was an idea I just couldn't leave alone. So while I waited for the CRT parts to print, I set about designing the Coco Vision chassis that would eventually house a retina display recovered from an old broken iPad. And for the sound, I harvested the internals from a Creative Pebble USB speaker system. And after two months and a lot of test prints, design revisions, sanding, painting, soldering, screwing, gluing, and uh, siliconing, the display was ready for attendees to enjoy some new age fun, but with a vintage feel. Thanks for the update, Ben. Seeing the game run on the retro TV setup felt great and filled me with even more excitement for the games festival. Now, if you agree that Ben did a great job, leave a comment below about how cool it looks. We got to the event relatively early and set up the table. Before the festival officially opened was the only slow part of the day. From then until way after closing, everything was a blur. I had such a great time. And a big thanks to Lily and Ben for helping out at the table and making sure I was eating and drinking. And a big thanks too to the organisers of the Queensland Gamers Festival, Truna and the team. It was a wonderful feeling seeing random people play the game, laugh at the bits that were meant to be funny, audibly reason their way through the puzzles, and physically duck and weave when in combat. It was a little nerve wracking when it came time to do a live interview up on the big stage, but I did see a fresh wave of people afterwards come past the table and play or watch whoever was playing. I think the next time I get to showcase the game I'll make room for two playable spots. A bunch of people commented that whenever they came past someone was already playing so they kept missing out. In all, the day was a blast and I can't wait to do something like it again. So I hear you ask, when can I play the demo? The answer is that this specific demo was just for the event, so I'll be taking a bunch of it and building out a proper demo over the next little while. Hopefully I'll have something soon enough that I can add to Steam. If you want to be the first to know when the demo is out, then join my Discord, Wishlist Braves Coconut on Steam, or both. For now, I'm going to keep working on the game. But before I go, I'd like to thank my patrons, specifically my Cockatoo patrons, Indie Rex, Comrade Crunchy, Mark Lucia, Skia, and Vanillit and my OWL patron, Mario J. Roberti. If you want access to some handy code snippets and possibly an early look at the proper demo, then become a patron today. That's all from me for now, I'll see you again soon.